If you've ever seen a construction site after a heavy rain, you likely have some idea of how badlands are formed. The loose soil and lack of plant cover make it really easy for water to flow over the site, carving many gullies, ravines, and other strange formations into the barren ground. Something similar happens with badlands, except it's way more complicated, occurs on a much bigger scale, and takes way more time to form. Now, the term badlands simply describes a particular type of geologic formation. You can find them all over the world. They occur on every continent except Antarctica. You've got these famous ones called the Putangarua Pinnacles in New Zealand, or these ones called Las Medulas in Spain. Bryce Canyon's famous hoodoos are even a type of badlands. But perhaps none are more famous than the striking formations found in Badlands National Park in South Dakota. This area, with its vibrant colors, dramatic fins, and overall harsh terrain, is actually where the term Badlands actually came from. In English, Badlands is derived from the French phrase les mauvaises terres à traverser, which translates to Badlands to traverse. This was later just shortened to Badlands. But the French actually adopted their phrase from the Lakota term Makosika, which translates to bad lands or eroded lands. The name was topical since these lands were basically impassable on foot and the only way to navigate them was to go around. This was also the first time this particular type of rock formation had been named. Thus, similar formations were also called badlands as it became clear how they were formed. In general, badlands are formed by two basic processes, deposition and erosion. Deposition is simply the depositing of large amounts of sediment over time. As those sediments are eroded away by ice, wind, water, or even gravity, they are transported from one location to another. When those forces are no longer strong enough to keep the sediments moving, they settle out, depositing themselves wherever that happens to occur. Eventually, over millions of years, they build up to form completely new rock formations. In the case of Badlands National Park, Deposition started around 75 million years ago. During that time, much of the Midwestern United States was actually underwater. A shallow inland sea called the Western Interior Seaway stretched all the way from the Gulf of Mexico to the Arctic Ocean. As the Rocky Mountains began to rise up though, they pulled the Midwest up with them, eliminating the sea but creating a nice shallow basin in what is today the Great Plains. That is relevant to Badlands National Park because as the Rockies continued to rise, they continued to deposit sediment at the base of their eastern slopes. Over the next 50 million years, everything from mud, silt, and clay to volcanic ash was brought to the Badlands. But remember, deposition is only one piece of this puzzle. Deposition alone isn't responsible for the harsh, jagged formation seen at Badlands today. That would be the work of erosion, the second major factor influencing Badlands formation. Erosion is sort of like the sister process to deposition. It will transport sediments away as long and as far as it can, and when it can't, deposition takes over and sediments start to build up. These two processes are often in competition with one another. Erosion carrying sediment away, deposition building it up. For a long time, deposition was winning this battle in Badlands National Park, but over the last 500,000 years or so, erosion has turned the tide. That's because, around this time, the Cheyenne and White Rivers started carving their way through the landscape. The Cheyenne especially is important here because it started to intercept new sediment coming from the Rockies, meaning new buildup was no longer reaching the Badlands. Without the deposition of new material, erosive forces were able to take hold and start carving the Badlands as we see them today. One of those forces is, of course, rain. On average, the Badlands see less than 20 inches of rain per year, but nearly 80% of it falls in the spring, dumping large quantities of water in a short amount of time. Of course, rain falls just about everywhere in the United States, eroding landscapes all over the country. So why don't more places look like Badlands? For one, the growing conditions in this region are quite harsh. Hot summers, cold winters, and little rain mean there's not a lot of vegetation on the ground to slow down or stop the flow of water, meaning it flows relatively unimpeded across the bare rock surface. Another important factor, though, is the type of rock that Badlands are made out of. Shale, sandstone, mudstone, limestone, and claystone are all types of sedimentary rock you can find in Badlands. Unlike igneous or metamorphic rock, sedimentary rocks haven't been forged in the fires of volcanoes or been exposed to massive amounts of heat and pressure. They've been created simply through the buildup of loose material over time, making them much more loosely held together 
and thus more susceptible to erosion. Coincidentally, these properties also make the Badlands a great place for fossils to form. The park is home to the largest collection of Oligocene fossils in the world, and is one of the features that inspired its protection in the first place. These factors basically create a situation where the water has free reign to carve the Badlands as it sees fit, which it has proceeded to do. So much so, actually, that the Badlands erode at the astonishing rate of around 1 inch per year. To put that in perspective, the adjacent Black Hills, less than 100 miles away and made of granite, erode at a rate of about 1 inch every 10,000 years. At this rate, the Badlands will be completely gone in about 500,000 more years, merely a split second in geologic time. So to recap, the Badlands were formed by the Rockies depositing large amounts of sedimentary rock onto an old seafloor before the Cheyenne River intercepted that sediment, causing erosion to take over and carve the striking formation seen today. But while this process may be specific to Badlands National Park, that general formula creates Badlands all over the world. These processes of deposition and erosion, creation and destruction, those are universal. But subtle changes in climate, geology, geography, topography, and more create stunningly beautiful ridges, spires, fins, buttes, hoodoos, ravines, pinnacles, and mesas. They are fine art on a geologic canvas millions of years in the making. If you want to learn more about the world's protected places, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. It helps you bring more park stories like this one to more people. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.